My name is Shamika Rogers Phillips. I am a nurse scientist and nurse practitioner who is a postdoctoral fellow in the Child Health Equity Program for Postdoctoral Trainees at the University of Washington School of Medicine and Seattle Children's. And I am a recent graduate of the University of Alabama at Birmingham School of Nursing um, PhD program, where I also got my bachelor's in nursing and master's in nursing in family primary care. found out about the NSRR from the Sleep Research Society, where I'm a member. I've been a member since I was in a pre-doctoral training. I actually was looking on there. They have a database of different data sets that are available that have collected sleep um, measures. And I looked at that data set and I was like, I don't see a lot of pediatrics. And I think I forgot to mention that my research focus is pediatric sleep health equity. Um, and so I'm always looking for pediatric data sets and the ones they had, they may not have had like the cardiometabolic risk factors, which I was looking for in my dissertation. And then one day I got a newsletter that mentioned the NSRR and I was like, oh, this is interesting. And I went on there and I was like, this is a gold mine. <laughs> So that's how I heard I heard about it and um, was very thankful for it because uh, it was very detailed and, and way more than I was probably expecting. I reached my data collection phase for my dissertation during COVID-19 and throughout my um, PhD program, my goal was always to look at how um, the relationships between sleep and cardiometabolic risk factors in, in school-age children and adolescents. And so right um, about the time it was time for me to do uh, collect data, which I was going to do a perspective study of school-aged children, uh, COVID-19 happened. And so children are a vulnerable population. And I was going to collect data in the schools. So all of that was just, you know, highly likely to not happen. And also puts a, a population at risk for COVID-19 exposure. And so it kind of was going back to the drawing board of like, what can I do to still do this work that I'm very passionate about, but also fulfill the requirements of my PhD program. And so the NSRR gave me the opportunity to do that because there's not a lot of focus in general compared to adult sleep on pediatric sleep. And so the, even within that, to have large data sets with very extensive collection of sleep parameters, not just a subjective sleep, but objective sleep, and then to collect very thorough cardiometabolic risk factors um, was just a rare thing. And so to have that on NSRR, I felt like not being able to do my original project wasn't as um, as sad <laughs> or um, that it, than it was originally when I was like, oh, this is not going to work. What am I going to do? Um, so the NSRR really helped with redeeming <laughs> my work that I've done throughout, the pro throughout my program and didn't get me too far off of um, my plans for things. <music> Data sharing is very helpful because it really did help me, especially when we think of vulnerable populations like pediatrics or pregnant women and so many other populations that there are a lot of um, things we need to consider when interacting with these populations. And often as, as junior scientists and um, pre-doc students and postdoc students, we may not have the access um, to those populations um, as easily as senior scientists or those who have been working in the field for a while or the funds to be able to support the type of work we want to do. So having access to that data to really build up our preliminary work and support us as we journey to become those senior scientists who offer that data, um, I think is really helpful. I think also it gives you know, senior scientists the opportunity to mentor outside of their institutions. Um, I know with my data set that I used, which was the Cleveland Children's Sleep and Health Study, Dr. Redline was a PI for that project. I was able to connect with her about that. And she was really helpful with making sure I had the, you know, questions I had answered and saying like I'm available to you um, if you have any more questions and so I think you know that is also an additional encouragement for those who are senior scientists to be able to not only contribute within their institution but outside of that and also within that there are restrictions to the data you have access to and 
you know, I'm okay with that, um, with the extent that I had experienced, because some of this data does need to stay within the institution so they can mentor those who are right there. Um, and also to protect those who participated in the studies. So I think having the data available publicly is really helpful, but I also, uh, you know, appreciate and respect restrictions to data as far as protecting the participants and also ensuring that your work continues to move forward within your home. But I'm so thankful that for the people who are sharing that data. NSRR is a very detailed database. Like you can go in there and kind of figure out your research project, um, you know, your purpose, your aims, your questions without even having access to the data. Um, preliminary statistics, like all the things you need to make a decision if this is a data set for you so you can apply to have full access to that data set. So I really enjoyed that and that you can easily look up what articles, you know, the primary article for this study, who was the PI for this study. There's so much detailed information that you have that you can definitely, you know, easily navigate in and determine what is the best fit for you. And the second thing is the support. Um, those who I connected with who are over in SRR have been super helpful. I remember Mike Rushman helped me out a lot. He was just really kind and, and you know, helping me navigate the system and answering any questions, connecting me to the people I need to get you know, additional information and going to do it. Um, like, hey, I'll look and see if we have this. And so having that great support and then an easy um, site to navigate was extremely helpful. My specific work was aimed at exploring how um, the relationship between sleep and specifically blood pressure and abdominal adiposity in older adolescents. And this work stemmed from um, the literature that supports that cardiovascular disease, which is leading cause of death in adults, um, the, the risk factors for CBD begin in childhood. Um, and so we do know that sleep has a relationship with blood pressure and um, overall adiposity using measured by body mass index and even waist circumference or your abdominal adiposity um, during adulthood unless it's known in the pediatric population. And specifically when looking at certain developmental stages of the pediatric population, for instance, if you're looking at the adolescent age range, you have 13 to 18 year olds in one group. A 13 year old is completely different from a 16 year old. I mean, a 16 year old can drive. They have a little bit more independence. So the behaviors and mechanisms behind the relationships between sleep health and cardiometabolic risk factors differ even within those developmental stages. At least that's my theory. Um, and so I use the data from NSRR to explore that with hopes that we can kind of determine where do these relationships between sleep health and cardiometabolic risk factors begin um, so we can work on preventing them or mitigate the impact of sleep on these risk factors with hope of decreasing the prevalence of cardiovascular disease during adulthood. Hey.